Now, I just happen to have a little bit of a jalapeno left over, and I've been seeing this thing on TikTok where they put whipped cream cheese into a jalapeno. But, um, I'm just gonna... I just got this little guy. So, I'm gonna see what the, the deal with that is all about. Alright. Here it goes. Mmm. Oh. I'm not bad at that. I think that's pretty good. Kind of like a jalapeno popper. But... <clears throat> I got the bacon and the breading. The cream cheese kind of chews as it goes down. Real good. Mmm. The thing is that there's also kind of like a, a little bit of a bell pepper taste. But, I like it. Alright, here's the rest of the jars. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up salt water, and that is key for fermenting. So this is about 32 ounces, so we'll see how many jars I can fill with this. And there we are, second batch, ready to ferment. So we'll see how those go. So I will see you guys when these are ready. Here we are, part two of making the hot sauce. These have been fermenting for a while, as you can see. It has turned from a bright emerald green to a muddy bell pepper green. So now it's time to strain them, then puree them, then add our oil and garlic salt, and then, well, we bottle it. All right, so as you can see, first I had to get the jars open, and I also had to drain them into the bottle. And let me tell you, if you have ever had hot pickle juice in your uh, eye, it hurts a lot. So I learned this the first time. Surprisingly, most of the brine didn't really end up filling the whole bottle. And later, when I did put it in the freezer to... Um, to keep for later, the bottle ended up breaking and, well, I didn't end up having enough brine to make any later hot sauce. But don't worry, I had enough for this batch. So, after I got this done, then it was time, of course, to get our pot ready. I got out the pot, I got some vegetable oil, and again, you can use any neutral kind of oil that you have. If you have it, I would definitely recommend going for it. Then I added in some garlic salt. But you can use fresh garlic. This is actually pretty good if you don't want people to bite into a piece of raw garlic when they are eating or tasting your sauce. And honestly, it works really well. My family uses it. And then after that, I stirred it up. And as you can see, I put it on a medium-low heat. And that's going to help it to make sure it doesn't burn. Because what we're doing is we're steeping the salt into our oil. And that's going to help it get nice and delicious and actually will end up having a very nice toasty flavor. And I had to show you guys exactly what the oil sounds like when it's cooking in the pot. Now, I took the strainer because I needed to use it so I could get the garlic salt out of there. And uh, if you guys can't really get it out of there, you can use more cheesecloth. You can use, you know, pretty much whatever colander you have. And, of course, I had to move it because I wasn't <laughs> looking at the blender. Now, after that, you're going to add your brine as well as your vinegar. And you want to make sure that you can do it pretty well. And sometimes, no matter how many of those you have, you want to make sure that you do have enough to add more brine to it. And as I can say, from testing and everything, that really does help. All right, so now that I've got that, I put some of the strained garlic salt back into the blender, because again, that's going to help us salt. And since it does have salt in it, I recommend that you make sure you watch it when you do put the teaspoons of salt in there later. And now, ooh, my favorite part, dumping all of the peppers into the blender. And I have to tell you, these ones actually did sit a little bit longer than I thought. And then 
I'm now adding the strained oil and I had to mix it up a little bit because there was some stuff that fell on the bottom and then me not exactly being the smartest tool in the box I did not plug in I plugged in the blender but I uh, didn't think about putting the lid on there so yeah not the smartest thing to do but then after that, I streamed in the rest of the oil. And what that's going to do is that that's going to help it get a little bit more mm, tasty, as it were. And I added just a little bit more salt just to taste it. Because again, I like it a little bit salty, but you can do it to your preference. Then I put the paper towel thing back on again. And uh, as you can see, it did, oops, get a little uh, messy. But then I went ahead and poured my sauce into my condiment bottles. I got these condiment bottles at Walmart and they actually were not very expensive and the ones that I did end up using for my friends I actually got those at on Amazon but if you can go to Walmart you know and again you don't have to use squeeze bottles. I even have some of the leftover hot sauce. I have it sitting in a empty hot sauce bottle in my fridge. So once you've filled it up Make sure you've got the lid on, and there you go. Here we have three lovely bottles of hot sauce. Was the effort, effort worth it? I think so. Now these are just going to sit in the fridge until I decide to, uh, until I can mail them. But, job well done. Hey everyone, editing Gabby here. I am sorry it took so long for me to finally get this video edited and put together. Um, there's a lot of times where I had to stop and restart and everything like that. But I, uh, I'm pretty proud with the result. And the hot sauce was good and my friends liked it. So I feel, feel pretty happy about that. So am I going to let them ferment as long as they did? I don't think so because instead of it being the two day, the five days to two weeks, it ended up being a little bit longer than that. And as a result, it was pretty, um, spicy. But everyone who got their bottles said that they were delicious. So I'm happy about that. Well, until next time, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.